RF man here. Today I want to continue my discussion of the super heterodyne receiver. In part one and part two of this four part video, I discussed RF amplifiers, frequency mixers, and bandpass filters. Today I'd like to discuss frequency dividers. So here's the original block diagram I use for the super heterodyne receiver. And I added to this diagram a frequency synthesizer. A lot of transceivers today, modern transceivers, use some type of frequency synthesizer with some form of digital control. So what we're going to focus on here is the frequency synthesizer and show how the various divider circuits are used in the synthesizing section. And so here we have a reference oscillator. This is usually a crystal oscillator in the system. Then we have our frequency synthesizer, and then again, some kind of control logic that's used to select different frequencies. So let's break out the frequency synthesizer into a high level block diagram, which we have here. And you can see here's our reference oscillator. Again, usually a crystal oscillator, Pierce oscillator, something like that. Then we have a divider circuit. Then we have a phase detector or a phase frequency detector, the PFD. They're the same thing. Then we have a loop filter, a voltage controlled oscillator, and a number of dividers. So you can see we have in this phase lock loop circuit negative feedback from the VCO, from the voltage controlled oscillator, which locks the reference frequency and VCO frequency together. There is going to be some slight difference in phase. It will be some slight phase margin, but the lock system with the feedback keeps these two frequencies locked together. So you have the reference frequency and the VCO frequency the same, and you have a slight amount of phase margin, but the phase margin remains constant. And then you can see here we're using various divider circuits, okay, in the transceiver, okay, for different reasons. So let's focus on the dividers. Okay, there are a number of different dividers. Some of you might recognize this circuit. This is a flip-flop circuit that's designed with transistors. Uh, we're going to be demonstrating how to use a flip-flop, a 74LS74, as a divide by two. And then you can actually cascade those to divide by two, divide by four, divide by eight, etc. Here's an active frequency divider that uses a transistor. There's a number of different topologies uh, that can be used here. And these two actually use subharmonics. To divide the frequency down and the, these are essentially the same so I'm going to discuss this particular one and I'll be using a reference voltage of 45 megahertz okay and then that's amplified it's passed through a low pass filter and then there's a feedback loop that's used here so the low pass filter is tuned at 35 megahertz so what this filter will do is pass the subharmonics and will attenuate the reference frequency. So, so what are subharmonics? Subharmonics would be harmonics that are generated below the fundamental frequency, in this case, 45 megahertz. And the first subharmonic would be the fundamental times 0.5 or, or half of 45 megahertz, which would be 22.5 megahertz. So we have the reference voltage, we amplify it, we filter it, we feed back the first subharmonic into the mixer, and then what happens when we talked about mixers, we have the sum and the difference of the reference frequency, and this would be where the local oscillator is, okay, but in this case, it's coming from the low-pass filter, okay, and we take the sum and the difference, so the sum would be 47.5, and the difference would be 22.5. So that's what we'd expect to see on the output here. So let me quickly show the arrangement here. I just used existing circuits that I had and kind of chained them together. This was the mini circuits mixer 
that I used. Um, basically the ADE 1H plus uh, that I demonstrated in in the first or second video and then we have the RF amplifier which I demonstrated and then this is the low pass filter which I've demonstrated in previous videos there's a video there that demonstrates these three filters and shows how to test and measure them on the nano VNA so you might go back to that video if you're interested uh, using um, the LC software I've designed and tested various filters so I'll give you a better idea there so let's take a look here's our function generator or 45 megahertz so let's take a look at the waveforms on the scope first So first we'll look at the input frequency. Okay, there you see the input frequency and put on the measurement scale here. We're at uh, yeah, 44.999 megahertz, 45 megahertz. Okay, that's on the input side. And then we can take a look at our output frequency. And you see we're at 22.499, call it 22.5 megahertz. So that's basically dividing the frequency in half. So now let's take a look at the fast Fourier transformation so we can look at the frequency components. Here, we'll just move this out of the way a little bit. And we can change the volt per division and change the time base. Okay. Okay. And what do we see? Well, we have our cursors here. Okay, so the first cursor is at 22.6. Actually, that's the, the resolution of the scope. I can either go 22.4 or 22.6. It's actually right in the middle there. Okay, at 22.5. And we can see here's our fundamental at 45 megahertz. And we can see um, about 25 dB of difference between the two. So the fundamental is being attenuated quite a bit. And we have the, the fundamental divided by two here. So that's how the divide by two circuit works using, again, the subharmonics. Now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at a couple of other different frequency dividers. All right, so now I'm back. Uh, the next topic we're going to discuss is how to use a D-type flip-flop as a frequency divider. And there's a couple of different devices that are used quite often. One is the CD4040. Okay, this has a number of flip-flops that are all cascaded together to give you a divide by 2, divide by 4, divide by 8, etc. Okay. And that's nothing more than individual flip-flops that are all cascaded. So let's take a look at how that's done. So here's an LS74 D-type flip-flop being used as a divide by 2 and divide by 4. Okay, here's the individual flip-flop. So we take and we apply our input frequency to the clock signal. That's pin 2. Then we take the data line that comes out, pin 3, and we connect it to Q0, which is pin 5, and then we take the output frequency here at pin 6, and it will be exactly half. And then if we take and we cascade that, we use the output of the first flip-flop to drive a second flip-flop, and we take a look at Q0 here, then it would be divided by 4. Okay, and then 8, and then 16, etc. So here's the uh, in internal pinout 
for the device so you can take a look where we apply the clock, where we apply the input, where we apply the output, etc. And let's go ahead and, and demonstrate that. So here is the circuit that I have breadboarded. Okay, it's just a single device with two internal flip-flops. And again, we're going to use it as a divide by two and divide by four. So I'll show you the input frequency and then the output frequency of the first flip-flop and the output frequency of the second flip-flop. So let's take a look at that on the scope. Okay, and now here is our input frequency. Okay, we're at 10 megahertz, which you can see down here. And then we take a look at the, the data line that's coming out. And then we take a look at, what do we say? Q naught, right? So Q naught should be a divide by two. So the 10 megahertz that we see, okay, which is coming from our function generator here, okay? If we look at Q naught of the first flip-flop, um, this is all TTL, so you see it, it does a good job of converting it into a square wave. If you needed a sine wave, then you'd have to integrate it and convert it back to a sine wave. But here we're looking at the square wave output, and we can see that it is a divide by two. Okay, now if we go to the next stage, the second flip-flop, and we take a look at that output, Okay, again, it divides it down further, and it's a divide by four, and we should get 2.5 megahertz. So that's just a simple demonstration of how to use a 74LS74D type flip-flop as a divide by two, divide by four, and you can cascade these together, or you can get a device like the CD4040, which already cascades a number of devices, I believe 12 altogether. Okay, so that's the demonstration for the flip-flop. The next circuit we're gonna look like look at is called a prescaler. I'm gonna set that up and we'll talk a little bit about that. All right, so the last type of frequency divider that I would like to talk about is called a prescaler. And I'm gonna be demonstrating on semiconductors MC one two zero nine three okay and this can be used as a divide by two divide by four or divide by eight it uses switch settings or programmable logic to change the frequency divider and here again are the three choices and it works up to 1.1 gigahertz so this is for uh, very high frequency applications they also have a version that works all the way up to 8 gigahertz and beyond. So let's take a look at how we're going to use this. And here's the prescaler. This is an internal diagram. And you can see that it's basically the same as the circuit we just looked at. It's a number of flip-flops that are cascaded together, and it has some switch settings here as control logic to select divide by two, divide by four, or divide by eight. So this is the basic circuit. It's fairly straightforward. We have uh, basically the input impedance at 50 ohms. We got the input AC coupled, and then we have the VCC, I'll be using 5 volts, but it's pretty wide range there, and a little bit of uh, decoupling and filter capacitance there for VCC. And then we take our output, okay, and we can demonstrate how this works. So let me just give you a quick look at the circuit, okay. This was the RF amplifier that I demonstrated, so the other half of this is the prescaler. You can see it there. Okay, and we're going to take a look at the waveforms. This gives us a nicely shaped square wave. And again, the square wave can be transformed into a sine wave with some integration. So here we're running at 
10 megahertz as you can see here on the function generator and we're going to start with uh, divide by 2 okay so here's a 10 megahertz in that we just looked at and here's our output frequency now I can use the switch settings to manually change this there's divide by 2 there's a divide by 4 and there's a divide by 8 and how do I do that I just change the control lines okay from two highs is a divide by two a lower high or higher or low is a divide by four and then two lows is a divide by eight so you could easily use any kind of control logic or Arduino board to program it and to change the divisions accordingly so so here we are at 10 megahertz okay and I'm gonna go ahead and take this all the way up but here's here's 20 megahertz okay so again there's a uh, divide by 2 divide by 4 and divide by 8 so 20 megahertz divided by 8 you see 2.5 megahertz there it is correct okay then we can take this up to say 30 megahertz and we do the same thing divide by 2 divide by 4 and there's divide by 8 which should be 3.75 right times 8 is 30 that is correct and we can go up to 40 so again divide by 2 divide by 4 divide by 8 okay and we'll take it up to 50 divide by 8 and the limitation of my function generator okay is 60 megahertz 60 megahertz okay divided by 8 would be 7.5 megahertz which you see there so it's a very nice circuit to use it provides a very clean waveform and it's got a wide range okay I can keep going up in frequency if I switched over to my uh, RF generator but I think uh, that's that's probably good enough to demonstrate how it works and let's just go ahead and take a little closer look at the circuit and the truth table okay so this was the circuit so here is the truth table for our switch settings right so we set up if we take the two switches and we put high on each one okay you could just use five volts for example Okay, a high and a high is going to give you divide by two, then a low and a high, or a high and a low is a divide by four, and then two lows is a divide by eight, and there's the corresponding waveforms that we just saw on the scope. So it's a nice, easy circuit to use, and I like the idea that you can couple it, interface it with control logic. So those are the three topics for today. I hope you found this helpful. RF Man, thank you.